Hi, I'm Misty, and welcome to the Book, Line, and Sinker podcast, a podcast brought to you by the Marble Falls Public Library. This week, we have a special guest with us, New York Times bestselling scholastic author, Sarah Minowski. Sarah Mlynowski. Welcome, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> okay, so tell me, why fairy tales? Oh, well, I always loved fairy tales, even so, ever since I was little. Um, I love to hear them. I love to play with them, fracture them a little bit. Um, I used to tell the story of uh, the princess and the pea, but I hated vegetables, so I would change it to the princess and the M&M. Uh. So I always, always loved to play with fairy tales. Okay, so you started early on writing. I learned that today after yes. listening to your presentation. Yes. Did you have a backup plan? Uh, yes. Well, when I graduated from college, I studied English Lit, but I got a job in publishing because mm-hmm. I thought that would be a great way to learn about the publishing industry and that I figured if it didn't work out being a writer, then I'd still get to be around books all day. Uh, so you do something that you love. Still. Yes. Okay. So here's a little bit different of a question okay. from a librarian's standpoint. <laughs> do you Google yourself? Ooh, that's, I mean, I try not to. Mm -hmm. I think um, I occasionally do, especially if there's a new book coming out that I'm curious about. But uh, I do, I have a Google News Alert set up, so I get any news articles. Yes, Uh, but I try not to Google too often. Okay. See, I've always wondered that because it would be tempting. It seems like it would be tempting to see what are people saying about me. So reviews, you also don't read read reviews? Um, No, I do read reviews. I like to know how people are uh, seeing the book. Uh, but I, t- I try not to obsess about reviews because sure. it's very easy. You know, authors tend to um, ignore all the good reviews and just focus on the bad reviews. So mm-hmm. if there's a hundred reviews and one is bad, then that's all I'm going to think about. And so you would obsess about right, it, exactly. <laughs> so do you have a favorite site that you would go to to look at your reviews? Um, I, I mean, not really. I guess I tend to look more at the like the professional reviews that are published, that's or it. Mm-hmm. I like, you know, I love getting letters from readers, so I, I read those instead. Oh, so those, you like those, fan are, mail. those are normally those are normally positive because nice. they don't take the time to write if they don't like your book. Okay, <laughs> so if you, um, a good question that I was thinking of earlier, looking at your books in the library, I love your cover art. Thank How you. important is that to you? Um, I, I've been very lucky with the cover art, and I've loved the, the, the design they did for whatever, After and Upsetting mm-hmm. Magic. Um, I think it's very important. I think kids and grown-ups do judge books by their covers. So you have to hope for uh, you know, a great cover that matches the – not only is gorgeous, but also matches the book because you want the readers to pick up a book and get what they're expecting. Have you ever sent one back? Let's come to you. Oh, of my own art? Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. I mean, I authors get different things. I don't have cover approval at this point. Oh. I'm sure, like, Stephen King and other authors, you know, J.K. Mm-hmm. Rowling has author approval, uh, right. cover approval. I have a cover consultation, usually, which means that my publisher will send me the cover and I'll send back notes. But usually they're great if I say, I really don't like this, and this is why, then they, they do normally um, edit the cover. Interesting. So I can tell by listening to you speak that you enjoy writing. I love it, so yes. So <laughs> it's almost like it, it's your passion because when you speak, you make me want to write. <laughs> so what is there, is there a piece of advice that you could give to somebody who um, is considering writing a book? Uh, for sure. I think that well, the most important thing if you want to be a writer is to be a reader, I think. So just to read everything, to know the kind of book that you want to write. You, should, you shouldn't write a book just because you think it's going to, that's what's selling. I think the key is to write the type of book that you want to read. Right. Um, and I would say write often. As a kid, I was always writing not just short stories, but I was always writing in my diary. And I, w- I was just always practicing writing. I loved it because you said earlier, Write ideas that come to you immediately. Yeah. I can't tell you how often I think of something and I think, gosh, I wish I would have written that down. So one of the things that you recommended was grab a napkin. Yeah. Anything that's nearby. What's the weirdest thing you've written an idea on? (laughs) Probably napkins, paper plates I've written on occasionally. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I write a lot of gum wrappers, post-it notes. Usually if I just have an idea and I know I'm going to forget it, then I'll just, you know, go through my bag to try anything that I could write on. I mean, now that I have a cell phone, I mean, now that I I often just text myself the idea also. That's interesting. So that makes me think about just always you – writing it down anytime it comes to you. And breaking it down was a really big thing that I took from you. 
Break it down. Yes, Don't absolutely. always think you can do it all at once. I think that it's very overwhelming for established writers and new writers to think, oh, I have to write this whole book. You should not think of it as a whole book. You should think of it as today I'm going to write a paragraph or a scene or a chapter and to try to do sm- to set smaller goals for yourself. And that's what I've done. And I've written 39 books, so it seems to have worked. I yeah, just you, you I it. could not sit down and say, okay, I'm going to write everything. It's, a, it's the same with the day. I work regular work hours, pretty much mm-hmm. 9 to 5 in my office every day. Um, and I never sit down and say, okay, now I'm just going to write this whole thing in one go. Right. I take, I, 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 it's strange, but I, put a, I actually put a timer on for 15 minutes and say, okay, I have to focus for these 15 minutes. And after these 15 minutes, then I can get coffee. Then I can answer email. Then I can check Twitter or Instagram. I don't want, and, and then when I, when I take my break, um, I set the timer again so that at the 15-minute the break goes off, I know I have to go straight back to work. I love it. So I'm always, that way I never get lost. I, I just don't want to fall down the rabbit hole of Twitter for no, you know, five hours later. And yeah. it would be easy to do. Yeah, so easy mm-hmm. to do. So you said 39 books? Um, 39 books, yeah. Did you ever or would you ever in your wildest <laughs> dreams have thought that you'd be here? No, I mean, you know, it's one of those things that it's what I, writing is always what I wanted to do. Um, and I just never, I, I, I can't believe still that I'm lucky enough to do it. Uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's my dream come true. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I get to do this and this is how, you know, I make a living is really amazing to me. So interestingly enough, you also write YAs. I do. I write YA and novels too. Yeah. That happens to be my favorite Oh, genre. really? Oh, 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 that's great. Yeah. So I, in my possession right now, I have I See London, I oh, See great. France. Okay, so good. I plan on reading that. But I read somewhere that it was based off of an experience that you got to. Yes. Well, I See London, I See France is about um, two friends, two college friends who go backpacking through Europe. And I went backpacking when I was 19 through Europe. So it was very much inspired by those five weeks that I backpacked. Um, and then I, I went back when I was writing the book because so much has changed since when I was 19. Um, but the, the biggest change about Europe really was the cell phone. Like we're mm-hmm. talking about right. having cell phones. And it, you know, when I went... I just travel. My parents, I mean, I would call them from um, pay phones. We didn't even have email then. So I, I can't believe how, you know, trusting and, and how they were now. I can't imagine letting my children. Your daughters. Like just, <laughs> I have two little girls. And just the idea of them going off uh, in Europe without me constantly knowing where they are is, is, is so scary to me. It's a different world that we live in. So being able to write about Europe with cell phones to me was the biggest challenge. So my first instinct was, oh, well, they just won't take them. Mm-hmm. But you can't do that. When you're writing something now as a if you're writing a novel now you have to you have to be mindful of the technology that is around. You can't pretend that you still live in the 80s or the 90s. True. You have to just write what's there. I love it that you got to experience Europe yeah. at that time without a cell Yes, phone I did. You yes. had to really do it. Yes, although I didn't have a camera because I feel like I, I lost my camera and I never I had pictures. And now these days if you have a cell phone, you have mm-hmm. your camera with you. You can take pictures constantly. And I didn't have one. I ended up having to get all my friends' mm-hmm. pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the trip wasn't on social media. These days if you travel, you'd be posting everything. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And you had to use maps. I know. I did. I did. They were paper back then. (laughs) Yes, I did. I I used Let's Go and I forget, like, um, travel books. Oh, And now I don't even know if people use travel books anymore, if they, you know, just kind of look things up online as they go. It's a little bit of both. I love it. So you, one of the um, things that you recommended was reading. Right. You're a reader. I'm a big reader. I'm always reading. Do you have a favorite genre? Um, That's a good question. I tend to read, I actually like reading kind of like, Gone Girl books, like little like women's fiction thrillers a lot. Oh, nice. I read a lot okay. of those. And I read a lot of kids' books with my girls, too. So if you had to go, if you were stranded on a deserted island, yes. do you have something in mind that you would take with you to read forever? Okay, well, over I'm a, and see, over. no, because I am one of those readers. I never read anything twice. Oh, no. I know. I, I know different that people are different. Mm-hmm. I never, I like to, I'm always reading something new. So for me, that sounds really so stressful. No, you no. wouldn't. Then. Do you have a no. favorite series? Um, a favorite series? I I don't read that many series these days. Usually mm-hmm. the books that I read are more standalone. Um, I Which mean, is I have, yeah. funny because you write series. Yeah. So that's yeah. interesting. I don't read that many. I mean, I watch a ton of television series. Mm-hmm. So I love, you know, feeling like you're with characters for a long time but book wise I tend to like new stuff um you know fr- like you know scary or little different I, I definitely like realistic fiction that's kind of what I what I gravitate so towards. contemporary yeah I like it yeah so if you I know you mentioned also earlier that you might possibly have a movie possibly, possibly yeah that would works. be great wouldn't that be cool to get to pick your characters? Uh, it would be. I don't think it works like that. Well, for me, anyway. Like mm-hmm. the way I what what's happened now is so 
um, Disney's optioned the rights to have Side Out Magic, so we're hoping that they actually, that they make it one day. Disney, make it. Yes. <laughs> and that'd be good, but I have nothing to do with it. I'm not producing it, so I'm not mm-hmm. writing it, so I kind of just um, get to watch it with everybody else, and oh, hopefully we'll cool. get to see things. I can't, I mean, it'd be so exciting if it happens. I love it because whenever I announced that you were going to be coming to the library, and I told just a few little kids, your books started flying. I mean, they're always checked Fantastic. out. But before long, there was not a book of yours left on the shelf Amazing. to be checked well, thank out. Thank you for doing such a great job so organizing it's exciting, and I love it. Um, anything from that you can recommend as a li- to a librarian? Because we want to push it. We want kids to read. We want to get it there. Can you recommend anything to us? You mean about how to get kids to read? Yeah, what's a good suggestion? I, mean, I think this is what, what you're doing is fantastic, getting authors in, getting authors to meet kids. I think kids mm-hmm. do respond to meeting an author in person. I know that I, when I was younger, um, you know, we had school visits. Gordon Corman came to mm-hmm. my elementary school, uh, who was one of my favorite writers, and it was so amazing and inspiring to be able to meet the author in person and to put a face to the book. And that stuck with you. Yeah, for and sure. And that's really neat because you remember that, and it did it help shape you? Help um, yeah, it, it definitely encouraged me to become a writer, told me that I could do it. Um, I, think, I mean, I think the key is, I know what I do with my girls, is just giving them the chance to pick their own books. Um, definitely to show them different books and mm-hmm. to show them different options and to encourage them to read different things so they're not always reading the same, the same thing, but to just let them read what they want to read. I never want to force my daughter to read anything because if I force her to read something and she doesn't like it, she's going to not like reading. So I, I think I just want to be open, let them choose what they want to choose, let them explore their interests. I love it. Well, we are so grateful that you stopped by. Um, so thank you guys for listening and thank you, Sarah, for being thank here. Thank you for having me. It was lovely. Thank you.